We are back with another episode of the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. We are joined once again by Dr. Amy Perlman. Dr. Perlman is a urologic surgeon focused on men's sexual health. She is passionate and dedicated to educating patients about sexuality, the physical body, and how to create pleasurable and meaningful sexual experiences. Dr. Perlman, thank you so much for joining us again. Hey, party people. Good to be here. Yeah. So (laughs) on today's episode, we want to uh, talk about and cover are the use of uh, sex toys and sexual aids in the bedroom uh, for couples, um, and that includes both for females and males. Um, So Dr. Perlman, before we get started, can you just give us, remind our listeners, just a quick overview of uh, your work, both in the educational space and in the clinical space? Yeah, I'd be delighted. So as you mentioned, I'm a urologic surgeon, and my practice focuses on uh, male uh, quality of life concerns that really affect everyday men of all ages, you know, late teens to to men in their 90s. And talking about sexual health concerns is, is really my passion. A lot of us in healthcare, we say men don't want to talk about it, and we have to kind of nag them and force this information out. But once you open the door, men don't want to stop talking about it. And that's a really fun part of my job. The other part of my job is as a reconstructive surgeon, I also offer gender affirming surgery. So for people who are sex assigned at birth male who identify as female, I also do surgery on those folks. And what I've learned in that process is that vagina and penis owners or men and women, we are so similar, not even just in terms of our wants, our needs, our desires, but in in terms of our anatomy. So when we talk about today, all these different sex toys and tools, I, you know, I asked the listener to think about how all of these products can benefit every single person in the bedroom and just taking gender and sex out of it for a second. We all want the same things and we can all benefit from these products. Yeah, it's a really, really important point because a lot of these products, um, you know, can be used cross genital um, and whatnot. Um, you know, at the same time, I think I think um, you know as we go through this, we will I guess focus on different categories of products. Some of them are are clearly more targeted towards one set of genitals versus the other. Um, and to you know, to get us started, uh, Dr. Perlman, um, there are a number of uh, devices and options available, certainly for uh, you know female partners, um, certainly around clitoral stimulation. Um, I, I know that sometimes. Um, you know, couples are hesitant, certainly female partners might be hesitant to introduce these toys into the bedroom. And your experience being a, uh, you know, in the education space, talking with, uh, you know, many patients, how important could some of these, you know, toys or or aids be for a satisfying sexual experience for people? These toys can be everything and they can be nothing. <laughs> um and you know at the the really at the heart of this is for ourselves as people understanding what feels good otherwise our partners won't know what feels good or you know what to do you know to us and so a lot of people might think oh my god toys are great and and i have a lot that i'm going to show you all today let's get all these different toys but the person might not like the toys so we have to understand how much stimulation is good and where does it feel good but using these products in the bedroom could really make the difference between an awesome and creative and innovative and very spiced up sex life or one that just stops and never gets restarted. So it could be everything or it could be nothing depending on the wants and needs of both people in the relationship. Okay. That's that's a really important point because I think sometimes, um, or I think for some people, there's a belief out there that my partner should be able to create an experience that is satisfying for me, or I should be able to create that for my partner. Why do we need a toy? But I think that there are you know many people out there who, without that additional boost, additional aid, you know may not be able to have the kind of experience that they want to have. And it can still be a very uh, connecting and intimate experience um, for two partners um, with one of these devices or multiple devices being a part of that. So I think it's a really important point. And that's Um, so true. And the other point is, it doesn't mean that any of us are dysfunctional. (laughs) If we just want to have a better orgasm, or if we get home from work and it typically takes 30 minutes to reach climax, but we're tired and we just want it to take five, I mean, that could be a reason to use these products. Yeah. That's that's again just another another really important point to not withhold any enjoyable or pleasurable experience if if like it takes you, let's say manually or, you know, 
a half hour, but you can get there a whole lot quicker with one of these devices to be able to engage in that kind of activity, both on your own or with a partner. Uh, really, really important. So, Dr. Palmer, to get us started, what are what are some of the um, commonly used devices for clitoral stimulation? The one that I think a lot of people think about is a product like this, a rabbit, which provides actually vaginal stimulation as well as clitoral stimulation. But this is going to be somewhat limited in terms of where you put this on someone's body. So other products, and I do highly recommend a product like this, so I don't want to say it's not a good product, but this product here can really simulate any area of the body. So I look at a product like this, and this one is the magic wand, as, um, as a door a door that opens a person or a couple into the use of some of these sex toys. Because you can put this on the clitoris, you can put it closer to the vagina, the perineum, closer to the anus, you can put it on the nipples, you can put it on the side of one's body, you know, so this one can really go anywhere and, and just be one to experiment so, with. Dr. Perlman, yeah. for, our, for our listeners and viewers who are not yeah. familiar with the wand, can, can you just give a little bit of a description? Is that something which is you know, inserted vaginally? Is that a vibrator? What is the what is the utility of this device? So this is a vibrator and this is a rechargeable device. And so you just push the power button on and it goes through different settings. So that's another thing too, is a lot of these products have a lot of different settings. And um, and so you can go low and you know it's like very subtle vibration, and then you can go up in terms of the strength of the vibration, but you can also change what that frequency of vibration is. So, you know, one of these settings will just be a constant vibration, okay, where it doesn't change at all. And there are going to be other settings that ramp up and then ramp down. So it kind of goes up and down. So, you know, different settings for different people, different moods, a setting that someone might find really pleasurable, you know, in one afternoon might be uh, not the best one, you know, if it's first thing in the morning. So it does allow, even with a single product, a really different sensations. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of variation. Now, can you just hold up the full device? Or listen, can you get a sense of like how just the size of it? Yeah. So it is a pretty big device. So that's something to consider because if you're just starting up with a partner and you bring this device out, that partner who might be less familiar with these different products might get a little scared of where are you going to put that? Or if you're traveling, you know, it is actually a heavier device as well. So this might be one that you use at home by yourself, but maybe not one that you travel with. So, so to that end, are there are there devices that are more travel friendly or are more uh, let's call them discreet? Yeah. So this one right here. Okay. So this one right here, you can also you know put on different areas of the body, but it's going to be you know like you would put this area right here, let's say you know on the clitoris. This one is battery power, or actually this is actually a rechargeable one as well. You uh, connect that part right there. And yeah, I mean, you could fit this really anywhere. You can fit it in your purse. Um, these are great things that like if you're going out and you are going to meet up with someone afterwards, it doesn't mean you can't take these products with you. I don't just mean like going on a vacation and taking these products. I mean, like certainly you can carry it in your purse uh, when you're going out. So that's another product. Okay. And what, what is that device called or what does that refer to if, if anybody wants to look into that further? So the brand is We Vibe. Yeah. So in, 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 you know, working with, with, you know, many people over the years, uh, the rechargeable versus battery is quite, is <laughs> quite a, uh, a debate, but I, I've worked with a number of people who have, uh, run into the rechargeable, uh, rechargeable devices running out of juice because they weren't properly charged in the middle of an experience. Uh, so I, I actually encourage people to make sure that they have a battery backup or a battery version, uh, that they can quickly change batteries if needed to not, really get in the way of the experience, but each person's got to like decide. the best advice you can get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, you know, each person has to decide how on top of their charging they are. Um, okay. So Dr. Palmer, you, you, you went over a number of, um, you know, different devices, anything else that really acts on or works on the, um, clitoral stimulation front? Yeah. So this is another product right here. It's, and the product line is called like a clitoral sucker or clitoral suction. And it's somewhat of a misnomer because it doesn't actually suck on the clitoral tissue. This part of the uh, device actually comes off so you can clean this part and then you put it on. And then this one actually senses when it's on the tissue. So it'll turn on when it's like on the clitoris and then turn off when it's off the clitoris. 
But this can be really helpful. These devices are really helpful for women who are unable to climax despite using some of these vibrator products. If you know they're not successful with those, I would actually recommend using one of these. Okay. And I assume that delivers a different type of sensation. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. How would a couple incorporate or integrate a device into their sexual play like this? I think that's one of the challenges and why so many people, they understand the concepts of what we're talking about here, but they don't understand the implementation, which is arguably the most important part because we know purchasing these products is one of the easiest things that we can do because we can get them at stores and online. And even these days at a lot of, you know, places like Target and, and, you know, Walmart and and places like that. So the, I always emphasize that people make it less of, I need this because you're not satisfying me, or I have issues with sensation and it I can't really feel when you are, you know, when we're having intercourse or when you're using your fingers, I need more stimulation, let's use this product. So let's make it less of an inadequacy, make it less about a dysfunction and more about, babe, I had a dream about you using this clitoral sucker on me last night and you look so sexy doing it. What do you think? Shall we give it a try tonight? Or babe, I got this vibrator where you can actually control it with a remote and I can put this in my vagina and it will sit on my clitoris. And when we're watching TV, you can have complete control over my pleasure. So when you hear conversations, you know, or door openers like that, it makes it a lot sexier, fun, creative, and less about a dysfunction. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's non-threatening. I like, guess that's it's the whole idea is to approach it as non-threatening. So that's the other, the other thing that people can do to bring it up is make it about their partner's pleasure. So for example, you know, if um, a woman wants to bring this into the bedroom, then she could say, Hey babe, you know, I wonder if we could try this on me, but what do you think about me trying it on you? I think it might feel really good on your penis. So it's making it about the partner's pleasure and not just our own pleasure. That definitely makes sense. Now, do do you um recommend or do you think it's okay for a partner to be the one holding the device or should the partner just be there present um, while the other person is using the device? I'm sure this varies between couple and couple, but I'm wondering what you have seen people do in, in your experience. Yeah. You know, anything goes. I have couples tell me that they really enjoy mutual masturbation, which could be with or without any of these devices. Um, But it's also really fun if we feel safe in a relationship to have our partners have complete control, you know, over our pleasure. So, yeah, I mean, anything is fair game. Really, really, um, you know, something I think that couples should should really be you know, taking to heart that there's no there's no right way to do this. And and um, as long as it is not being done in a way where it's you know about another partner's inadequacy. Um, however, couples engage with these toys really sounds like it's fair game. Now, we spend yeah. a lot of time and talking. Communication is key, yeah. though. Communication is key because my partner or someone else's partner is not going to know what setting feels best for that person. Mm-hmm. So even just going through the settings, hey, babe, does that feel good? Where does it feel good that I put it? Because even just a slight you know, um, change in direction of the vibrator could be the game changer, right? Mm -hmm. So communication is key, babe. What feels good? What doesn't feel good? What's too much? What's not enough? And I think these sex toys can really open up the conversation to kind of like that sensate therapy type mindset. Yeah, you're saying it really is. It's a lot of this is about exploration and it's about feedback. Um, And I mean, it's a really important point because, uh, even with the introduction of uh, sex toys or these devices, um, people can still feel like, yeah, but I should know how to do it, or I should know how to do it that my partner's going to like it. I should know how to hold it. I should know where to place it and whatnot. Um, and and having that open communication that it's really, really um, complex. And every person is a little bit different and what their preferences are is different. And it can even change from experience to experience. That communication is so key. Now, Kind of shifting over to uh, the penis, what are some of the options for toys that are, I guess, more geared towards towards men? 
So this product right here is a product that actually a lot of my patients really enjoy. This one is called the hot octopus and it's really a masturbator. So, or a sleeve. So you put the penis in here and then you have a area here that vibrates. So, you know, people can use this soloed, but also a partner could use it on the penis to help that person experience pleasure. And I, you know, I see so often in guys, they come in with low testosterone concerns or erectile dysfunction concerns. But when we really get into the conversation about what it would look to, like to optimize their sexual life, so much of it is, is men and their partners lose sensation as they get older. And it could be due to age. It could be due to diabetes. It could be due to a variety of medications. So increasing stimulation so that they can even enjoy, you know, things like intercourse is really critical. And that's why I have so many guys who say, yeah, I, I really, the sensation is not quite what it used to be, you know, get products like this. Yeah. And, and this one also, yeah, go ahead. So to, to that point, I mean, I think it's, it's, you know, definitely something that I see come into the office where again, it's, it's, there's no clear physiological reason for it. Some of it might just be due to loss of sensation over time and whatnot. Um, are there any devices that can be used during penetrative sex um, where the man could could wear that and it kind of elicit like that increased stimulation during a penetrative experience? So there is actually another iteration of this device that can be used for couples to stimulate the female partner as well. And, and then you have cock rings or penile constriction bands. And these devices here, and this is the firm tech device. So yes, it can be used to help with function. It can help close off the veins so that the blood stays in the penis. But one of these bands too can also go around the testicles to provide testicular engorgement. And some people like that as part of the sensual and sexual experience. Okay. Can you, can you talk to a little bit more about uh, the ring and, and kind of let listeners know like how, how that enhances uh, the male sexual experience outside of the testicular engorgement, how does it, how does it help, um, increase pleasure, or increase sensation? Yeah, absolutely. I think we forgot to send out the, the memo to heterosexual men. Um, but men who have sex with men, I think understand this concept a lot better than heterosexual men do. And it's not their fault. It's just, people don't talk about it. But someone just wanting to last longer or perform better or when they're sleeping at night still have some engorgement of the penis so it's easier to get an erection of the middle of the night to add some spontaneity in terms of middle of the night, you know, intercourse, for example. That's where these products can be helpful. So nobody needs to have a dysfunction in order to warrant or benefit from using something like a constriction band. And that's where this product in particular, you know, the firm tech ring, there are actually two iterations of this device. One is a performance ring. So you would use it to keep blood in the penis and to wrap, you know, put around the testicles. But then there's another iteration, kind of like the smart device, where you can wear it all night and it will upload information to that person's smartphone that will tell that person in real time how many erections they had overnight, which can help just that person better understand their body. Now, some people love constriction bands and some people hate constriction bands. The key when using these different devices is to find one that's tight enough to keep the blood in, but not too tight that it causes discomfort. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend constriction bands in everyone because a lot of guys are going to say it's too tight. It's not comfortable. I don't like it. It's one of the primary complaints around these bands. And certainly for men who um, struggle to maintain erections, it can be a sometimes less of an enhancement device and something which helps to, again, kind of restrict that blood flow um, once the erection is gained. Uh, but that one of the primary complaints of this device is the discomfort or the tugging on pubic hair or whatnot. Um, that certainly is a challenge. Now, Spectre Perlman, one of the uh, well-known devices for, for male sexual pleasure is the fleshlight. And, you know, this device is, is you know, primarily used for solo sexual activity. I'm wondering what your take is on a device that really is meant to be used by one partner, does not have a lot of involvement from the other partner. Is that the kind of device that a couple, you know, should consider incorporating if that brings pleasure to to a man? Or is that something that you think is best left for individual setting and and really toys that that can have some mutuality or 
um, some kind of um, involvement uh, for both partners. Yeah, so, exactly. Toys that can have some kind of involvement for both partners. Is that what really should be saved for the, the couple setting? I think that we are actually missing the boat when we think about soloed products and soloed activity. So much of what you see and so much of what I see are when people come in with discrepant libidos, where one person, you know, wants to have sex more often or engage in sexual activity more often than their partner. And wow, these devices could be the answer to that. It could be the answer to two people still being able to engage in intimacy and touch and looking at each other in the eyes, right? But maybe if it's a heterosexual couple, maybe that woman is having some pain. Maybe she is having her period. Maybe she just um, is not interested in having sex that night. It doesn't mean that couple is not able to engage in intimacy if they both want to. So I think what we call like these solo products, the masturbators, the sleeves, what someone would do, you know, in their bathroom when no one's watching, we need to bring those products out into the bedroom. It could be the answer to so many relationship issues. And it's a, it's a, a great point because discrepancy in desire is, I would say it's probably it's probably a feature of most relationships. Um, and it's, it's a reality that, that again, can create a lot of challenges. You say this might be a unique um, way to start solving that challenge. And, and it could be extremely intimate because there certainly is a lot of vulnerability when one partner is like purely on that, like self pleasure receiving end, and the other partner is just there and present, but isn't even like, like engaged in the actual activity itself, but is very much engaged with the partner. Uh, that's a really, you know, really nice thought. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other areas of sexual play that people engage in. We didn't really touch at all on anal play, which you know has its own set of toys. Obviously, vibrators and and other insertable devices can be a part of that, but there certainly are specific devices that are are specific toys that are used for that as well. So no doubt there's a lot of other areas to cover. Are there any other like really key important uh, toys or devices that that couples can or do use um, that we didn't cover in this episode? Mark, I'm so glad you brought that up about the anal play and different pelvic wands because that is actually a it is a critical point. When I am talking with a person or a couple in the office, I make it very clear, we're just talking about anatomy. Where you feel pleasure has nothing to do with who you're attracted to and your sexual orientation. It just has to do with science and anatomy. And the nerves that go to the penis are the same words or the same nerves that go to the perineum or the same nerves that go to the rectal area. So of course, stimulating those other areas can be very pleasurable. Now, not in everyone, but that's another opportunity for exploration for, for men and for women. Mm -hmm. And so using these products and, and actually a, a way to create a safer place for these products. And I'm telling you, even the Iowa farmers that I see, a lot of them are, you know, have had great success with these devices. A lot of them also have pelvic floor muscle dysfunction. They might have testicular pain or urinary issues or, you know, pain with ejaculation. So I send a lot of these guys to see a dedicated pelvic physical therapist. And at that time, the pelvic physical therapist can teach the person about their body, about their pelvic floor. And it's a way to get guys more comfortable with that area where they might put a, a pelvic wand into the rectum to target a pelvic floor muscle. And then after a while, they might realize, oh, that actually feels good. And so that can also help them get more comfortable with those different types of devices. Yeah, it's really, really, really important points. Now. Dr. Perlman, I'm going to ask you to speak to product quality when it comes to these toys and devices. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of iterations of all of these devices. And you know, some of them come, you know, from places that we probably have a very hard time understanding what materials are being used and being sourced, which you know, potentially poses health risks. So can you speak a little bit toward like how people should be searching for these devices? What, how do they know if it's rep, if it's a reputable company or if it's something which could be you know, dangerous to their health? 
Such a great question. And it is such a challenge. And like with anything in medicine and, and, you know, Amazon shopping and whatnot, there are so many different products out there. And when there are too many choices, people don't know where to begin. That's been actually product recommendation has been one of the most important things I've done over the last few years at the University of Iowa, because I realized it wasn't going to be good enough for me to tell my patients, you need to get a vacuum erection device or a traction device or a penile constriction band or a masturbator. If I just say that and I don't provide recommendations, those people will never get those products. So what I do is I pull up a website. The website is called promescent.com. And, and and that is actually a delay spray that can be very beneficial to help prolong erections for those with premature ejaculation. But I pull up that site to show sex toys because I know the guy who runs the site and I know he's legit and I know his reputation is on the line by the products he puts on that site. And I know he's going to hear about complaints if he puts crappy products on that site. And so I take them to that site and I scroll down and I show them this is the hot octopus. This is what I mean by a clitoral sucker. I also have a great relationship with a compounding pharmacy in the area. And he stocks a lot of these products as well. So when I have patients and they come back in and I ask them, were you able to get any of the products? And they say, I got the hot octopus. I don't end the conversation there. I ask them, did you like it? Would you recommend it when they get products like this? or products like this, I asked them, did you like it? Did your partner like it? Did you recommend it? So for a lot of these products, because I didn't know about a lot of these products until about a year ago. If you were to tell me a year ago, what's a clit sucker or ask me, I would say, I have no idea. I'm learning. I learn every day. I learn from people like you. I learn from my patients. I learn from other urologists and sex educators. And when I'm asking them questions, I'm legitimately asking because I need to provide recommendations to other people. And if they're not good products, I stop recommending them. Yeah. And I mean, it sounds like Dr. From what you're saying is that like, it's really important to, you know, work with a reputable company that really specializes in this space. The, the, you know, Amazon marketplace and the Ebays and whatnot, you, you literally will find hundreds of the same devices and they're all being sold by third-party sellers and whatnot. Very hard to verify where these products are coming from. But when you go with a company that is specializing in this, that they have, you know, a lot of them do have, you know, quality control and they can tell you what the materials are and how to care for it. Um, that's probably the safer route to go. Is that correct? Yeah. And those are key pieces right there is you have to clean the devices appropriately, especially if you're using them with your partner, right? Or partners. All of these devices will have a manual that will let you know what type of cleaning solution is going to be appropriate. And then you want to make sure that you get the appropriate cleaner and you can get those online or in stores as well. And then the other point is that you want to make sure you're using compatible lubrication if you're using lubrication with these devices, as certain lubrications can wear down or break down the material, depending on what material those products are made out of. So cleaning and uh, lubrication compatibility is critical. Yeah, we also you know, encourage people to clean these devices both before and after use, uh, because they can um, you know, retain bacteria and whatnot. Um, and ST, yeah, STIs. I mean, it's a way that STIs can get spread. Right. And then the other thing too is the first product that someone gets is probably not going to be the only product. And so I would recommend getting a product that can be used in multiple different areas so that person can learn what feels good first. And then you can look into other different products to see how can I better target that area? It doesn't make sense to get five different pelvic wands for rectal stimulation or prostate massage if that person doesn't yet know if they enjoy prostate massage. But once they understand that, then you know, searching for different products or do they like vibration? Some people vibration is too much. They don't know where to focus their mm-hmm. attention. Yeah. So and and that's where a device, device that's where a device like the wand could be it's got it's got it's got multiple uses and people can use use that to explore and start to understand more about that. You're saying once they have a better understanding of what feels good, what feels right, they may want to, you know, focus in on a much more of a niche product, which really kind of speaks to that particular area of the body. 
Um, but it's it, this kind of goes back to Dr. Perlman. I think one of the big points that you were making is that so much of this in a couple setting, but also in, in for individuals, it's it's really about exploration, about learning, um, and about like really being able to identify what are the areas for me that really feel good, and ultimately how do I incorporate that with my partner? Yeah, you're so right. And just going back to that basic question, babe, what feels good for you? Yeah. Does this? Does that? And you talk a lot about performance anxiety, and I would encourage the listeners to look at all of these tools as a way to um, kind of combat performance anxiety. Nobody can be everything for everybody all the time. You know, I understand that for me, you know, the vagina or for a vagina owner, that vagina is not going to be everything for their partner at all times. Right. But that person as an individual, as a partner can be, you know, can offer a lot of different things, even if their vagina is not, you know, going to be performing that evening. But it's the same thing for the penis. The penis is not going to be everything for everybody at all times. Hey, but maybe the clitoral sucker is going to help out that female that night rather than the penis. And that's okay. There's no yeah. problem with that. Dr. Perlman, that's a really, really important message. Um, I really appreciate you coming on and um, sharing your insights about these toys and how couples can incorporate that into their relationship. So once again, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me.